Hey everybody, Mikey Kung Pao here, almost Halloween. Uh, do you like my Halloween disguise? Yeah, uh, I decided to turn myself uh, into a bearded dragon. You know like a money python when it's got like a... Uh, she turned me into a newt. Uh, but I got better. Okay, so... Um, Alright everybody, enough of that. Now I got my real disguise on, because I know nobody ever seen me looking quite like this before. So, you know, but uh, tell me something. How come Halloween always remind me of Jodi Araya? There's something about the holiday just remind me of her. Um, you know, you know, I don't really like Halloween very much. Not my favorite holiday, because it's nice little kids go around and get the candy and everything. But you know what? We have 22-year-olds and things that come around from down the street. And you go to the door, and they want to, like, take all your candy. Then they give you this look, like, hey, maybe you better give me something from your wallet, too. Maybe roam me your car to go down joyriding and stuff. Not only that, but their girlfriends come along in costume and they dress like, can I say this to you, sruts, okay? Uh, when did Halloween costume, it's supposed to be scary. How come now it's all about French-made outfit and, you know, uh, naughty school girl and all that kind of thing, you know? Hey, can anybody tell me where I can find, um, like, a website with full-grown women wearing the naughty school... Hey, shh, just kidding, okay? Uh, I don't look at things like that. Anyway, I only have eyes for my Mrs. Mikey Kung Pao. You saw her in her uh, her cute cowgirl outfit, borrowing my hat. So, uh, so what are we gonna do? Now, let's look at a couple things. I'm gonna show you something about uh, Oregon, why I've been gone, fall trip up there, and uh, instead of doing one of them boring slide shows like when you were a kid. Okay, you guys aren't old enough for this, but when I were a kid, we had to go to somebody's house and watch a stride show of their vacation. And this would go on for like two hours, you know. First of all, they were terrible photographers. Then they would take these boring looking shots of, you know, some building or something, you know, at, at like 27 different angles and then telling you everything the tour guide told them. And you're sitting there, you know, bored out of your mind and, you know, wishing you could be, you know, having root canal surgery or something instead. So I'm not going to do that to you. I'm just going to show you where I live up in Oregon, why I like to get away. There's no internet up there. That's why I've not been making videos for a long time between that and then when I am at work, a very, very busy schedule, three-hour commute every day, exhausted, uh, lots of things going on with the kids, uh, Mrs. Mikey Kung Pao have surgery lately, and I uh, had to take care of that and help her. So a whole lot of things like that been slowing me down from making video. But anyway, let's go look at what's going on in Oregon, and I'm going to show you a real UFO. You thought I was joking about that in my title. No, we're going to show you a real one. Hold on. All right, everybody, I'm going to show you where I live up in Oregon, uh, on the coast there. And uh, this is my back deck, okay? I did to sit out there with some coffee. And this is what I see, a uh, tributary of the Umqua River, at tidal zone, tide go up and down. So it's all water and forest back there on the other side. Very beautiful. See all kind of wildlife and everything. Uh, Camarons and... Um, eagles and hawks and water birds of every kind. We have two blue herons to hang around and uh, all kind of things swim by. Uh, you know how it is when you go fishing and people say, oh yeah, you should have been here yesterday. Oh yeah, see the camera? And they say, you should be here yesterday. Every time I go there, my neighbors say, hey, yesterday we saw a beaver go by and, uh, you know, some otters and things. And I'm going, oh yeah, sure, right. And, uh, you know, the Loch Ness Monster and everything went by, you know. So, anyway, you can see why I like it up there. It's a nice, a beautiful place, very quiet. And uh, this is why I go there and disconnect from Internet sometime. All right, so give you an idea of where we're living up there. And then uh, this place here, a couple blocks from home, that old fish cannery down there. They used to catch a lot of salmon and stuff in uh, this town. And that was the cannery. And so that's the mighty Umqua River right there. And about two brock from my house. I mean, I walking distance over there. I'm going to do some salmon fishing there, of course, when I get a chance. And there's Dr. Rachel. Hey, Dr. Rachel. Okay, so um, I turned the sound down on this one. Because uh, the guy that was narrating it have a funny accent. And the uh, fish restaurant. Uh, those are some big trestle, tra train trestle that turn for the ships to go by. Uh, this actually ships can come up this river. It's that deep. And then there's a regular road bridge back there, too. A uh, typical kind that you find in Oregon. So, that a couple blocks away. I, I'm only going to bore you with a little bit more of the 
trip, a fall trip thing. So this here is a couple miles from home, and it does some elk. You see that buck there? That guy have a harem of like 15 female. He the only buck there. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm jealous, because, uh, you know, for me, I would be very overwhelmed if I had that many females to take care of. I think that, like, one Mrs. Mikey Kun Pao enough, for me anyway. So, uh, I'm not begrudging him a harem, uh, but I don't know what he'd do with all them female. Now, uh, what we have here, this is a little bit of the Oregon coast, and uh, Dr. Rachel and I are uh, checking it out, uh, pretty close to where I live, and a lot of scene like this. Amazing thing there, the beaches with nobody on them all over the place. Maybe i show you a little quip of a uh, little bit of one. But uh, I think Dr. Rachel in this one. Oh, oh yeah, there she is. Okay, so she's the artist, you know, with the bad boyfriend. Uh, we don't talk about him, though, otherwise I have to get the Jody knife out. And, uh, you know, we don't want to have to get the Jody knife or anything like that, so... Now this with the sunset, uh, close to home, uh, right house in the town. And this is where we saw the UFO uh, the next night when, when the sky were actually clear. And uh, don't have a nice sun. We, we got the perfect weather there. So um, you see the right house over here. Okay, so uh, that's a nice thing. And that's a, right the place we saw the UFO. This here, a, a, a rake close to where I live. There's about 20 rakes. Um, around that area within a 20 mile radius. This one called Syracuse Lake. Got a lot of really pads and everything. I think it's a good place for bass fishing, you know. Uh, I hooked something there before. I think what a trout. But I've caught some fish in some of the rakes, a bunch of different kinds. So yellow perch and bass and largemouth bass and uh, trout and um, some little salmon. What that little species name? Anyway, a uh, real small salmon that they have in some of these rigs. Now I'm showing you the UFO I was telling you about. Can you believe this UFO? Man, a very spectacular... Okay, all right, it's the right house. I'm just fooling. You know, if you fuzzed your uh, focus a little bit, you know, you could make somebody believe that's a UFO. See how them lights going around it, too? So it has a couple of features going for it. Kind of interesting at night. I'll show you the real UFO in a second. All right, I'm back. Not in disguise anymore. Uh, not wearing my costume anymore, so now you can tell who I am, Mikey Kung Pao. So you can kind of see why I like it up here in Oregon, away from the rat race, Silicon Valley, that I, where I work in rocket science. Uh, so horrifically busy all the time and everything. Um, but I didn't get to the punchline yet, did I? I show you the real UFO video. All right, I want to set this up for you just a tiny bit. First of all, when i narrating the video up there, my voice sounds completely different. And the reason for that is, uh, I have a really funny accent up there. And the reason for that is, it's an Oregon accent, just so you know, so, so I can fit in. So I'm gonna sound different than I do on this part, all right? Uh, then we come back and explain to you about that video. Okay, here's our UFO over Reedsport, Oregon. I've never seen a plane with this light scheme ever. And whatever it is, it's totally silent. It's completely quiet. So we are seeing a very strange UFO. I have no idea. And very flickery. Over the ocean. It seems to be changing velocity and speed. It looks like it could even be a spaceborne object. And it has no sound. I've seen a lot of plane blending lights and running lights. This is not like any of them. It's a flickering orange. All right, what do you think about that? Pretty creepy, eh? Uh, pretty strange. I've never seen anything like it. I'm not fooled by these kind of things either. You know, like the Phoenix Wrights that they said was UFOs in Arizona. I know what that was. It was 
um, military planes do exercises at night sometime where they drop flares. So you see these orange lights coming on that are very mysterious and they slowly dropping and moving depending on where you are. Uh, there are tons of things like that. I've been a sky watcher all my life and I've seen every kind of phenomenon. But I've never seen something like that before, what I just show you. It's not a meteorite, meteorite I should say, and uh, definitely not that, and definitely not a plane or jet of any kind, not an aircraft of any kind that's known. I think I know what it is, but you know what? I gotta tell you in some other video and let you dangle around a little bit, because you know, it's kind of Halloween-y for me to do that. Uh, let it be creepy. It could, could be aliens, you know. I've seen an alien or two in my time. I told you, Jody Orion an alien, pretty sure. So um, I'm going to show you a couple clips of what we're doing around here for Halloween-y preparations. It's almost Halloween. See, i got my little thing here. Okay? And uh, that UFO kind of like, like, like this little pumpkin head, but without all the rest of this thing. You know, and it's getting bright and dim and bright and dim, all orangey and everything. But, um, so I'll show you a couple things. Be right back. We'll be done. She got my cowboy hat on. Uh, this is her, uh, makeup on. Oh, don't worry about all that now. Hey, she hot. What do you think? I think so too. Okay. Now what else is going on in here? Now we got our first we got our first fire of the season kind of chilly today. Oh look, there's a little bearded dragon down here. Hanging out down here, uh, hanging out by the fire. Oh look, we're all getting uh look here, we're getting all ready for Halloween. Halloween? Anyway, uh dear Chelsea, the the singer and uh, her husband Jason over there. And uh they're working on pumpkins. You know, this pumpkin thing, it's too hard for me. I don't even try to do it. Look what they do. Uh, I'm going to show you when it's all done and they light it up. And they've got to punch all the little hole with this pattern here. And uh, this thing is so thick. How are you going to cut that? Hey, if you were going to be Jody Araya for, like, Halloween, uh, what kind of tool would you use? Can you show me? Ooh, that's a scary one. That's a pretty good Jody Araya tool right there. So, I don't know. Don't know if anyone did Jody Araya mask, but uh, for Halloween, if they didn't, they should. Okay. We come back later when they're all done and uh, see them all lit up on Halloween. All right, so uh, here I am with uh, Chelsea again and Jason, and they're watching some kind of scary Halloween movie. They were doing some more pumpkin carving tonight. What's what that? The yeah, that the guy it's looking John for John Carpenter's Halloween. Oh, he's looking for Michael Myers. This one when I first went. Hey, what's the actress name played the babysitter in this thing? Uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. I remember when the movie first came out. She's like playing like a 16-year-old. And now she does these, she's this old lady doing these commercials on TV about some kind of like laxative or something. Can you believe <laughs> yes, that? Uh, so yeah, some kind of probiotic. Probably. Yeah, isn't that kind of sad? Make me feel very old. <laughs> you guys lucky you're this wrong. This was 78. 78? Okay. Yeah, 1978. So. All right, back to my video making. Uh, Boston Red Sox won tonight. Not that you guys care one way or the other. Neither do I, come to think of it. Those guys look like Halloween guys themselves because they got these funny big beard on them now. All them baseball <laughs> players, great big beard like they're from the Ozark or something, the backwoods. Uh-oh, there's Jamie Ree. Look how long she, young she is there. Now you see her on TV, she old lady. Short gray hair. Why do they make their hair so short? Okay, leave you guys alone. Oh, let you watch the scary well, thing. there you have it. Uh, the Halloweeny preparation goings on uh, today with the last game of the World Series, and uh, I think the guy all in costume because they all have those uh, funny dark, look like dyed beards on, look like phony beards, great big ones, all of them. So, uh, you know, I must not be much of a baseball fan. Really, I like NASCAR and football for the most part. I only watch the World Series now and then. So, all of a sudden these guys show up with big beards, and I'm going, "Hey, when did this fad start? It's like the chewing gum and the chewing tobacco." You know what they're doing that chewing gum and chewing tobacco, don't you? Go baseball's such a boring game. They gotta stand around for hours, and then they got a little thing happen. You know, they get a base hit or something, and they gotta catch a fry ball, all this and that. And uh, you know that if they could, the rest of the time, they'd be sitting out there with their little, uh, you know, PDAs and and phones and things, you know, messing around, you know, uh, like Alec Baldwin, you know, on the flight, you know, punching in the numbers and everything, and playing them games. But they're not allowed to do that. Someday they're gonna be doing that. We're going to make another video on people and their cell phones sometime. Anyway, until then, let me just say we have some ideas on future videos. I can't make them very often, because, uh, but I'm going to make a video on Obamacare. No, not politics, okay? Just Obamacare. It affected me, believe it or not, in a big way. Great big way. It kind of ruined my life. And... Um, you're going to say, Mikey Kung Pao, how could Obamacare, you and rocket science, we know you got health care at work and everything. 
never mind, we'll get to that. Okay, but uh, we have a lot of other ideas, uh, things about uh, what happened when you're out driving and uh, lots of stuff like that. So, and of course, Jody Arai will come back someday in about 10 years for her sentencing hearing, and we'll cover that when it comes up. But meanwhile, until the next video, hey, don't go with no sociopath, just don't okay. Take care. Bye.